Hello, this is Cecilia with Kentucky Rose Devotionals, where we're finding the roses in the Word of God. It's Thursday, March the 8th, and I'm happy to be with you. We're going back to the book of Matthew. Yesterday we were in Exodus, and today we're going back to Matthew chapter 25. So all this week we've been looking at the thought of building a new life in Christ. We've talked about daily reading of the Word, planting it deep inside our heart. We've talked about making commitments, setting parameters in place throughout your week that allow you to spend time with God um, and to be committed to prayer with Him and prayer with your family um, and being consistent in your prayer life, being consistent in your prayer walk, your life with the Lord, that people, when they look at your life, it causes them to want to follow Christ because of your your fruit that you're producing, the fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, kindness, gentleness, long-suffering, all those things um, that God produces in us through the Holy Spirit, walking with Him, walking with with Jesus each and every day um, through his word being determined it, it really takes a determination in this day that we're in you can't make it unless you are completely determined to walk with God and be dedicated to staying in his word and dedicating yourself that no matter what comes your way you're convinced and you know by what you've seen in your life by the example that Jesus has 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 led for us has set for us that we know that our life is hidden in Christ that God is good no matter even when life is bad God's still good when you ground yourself on that when that's your firm stable foundation then it is easier for us to continue and do the things that we need to do every day even in pain even in suffering even in uh, disillusionment when things don't go the way we want them to go and when people de- deny us reject us all these things that take place in life we still carry on because we have our eyes focused and set on heaven that's really the key um, in in keeping your life hidden in Christ and walking with him every day if you're a new convert that's that's especially um, important so you know all these things that we're looking at and today um, as we look at Matthew 25 you're gonna see Jesus giving us more parables um, giving us giving us stories to live by true stories um, the story of the ten versions the talents um, the concerning future judgment of the world all of these things we're going to see Jesus talking about right before leading up to his crucifixion. So we're going to see these things winding down in Matthew chapter 25. And as we go forward, you're going to see the book of Matthew come to a close as we see Jesus resurrected at the end of, of this wonderful book of the gospel. So um, in, in this, this gospel written by Matthew, of course, again, we know as we've been studying this that Matthew was... Um, he was a, a tax collector, so he's very good at getting the details um, right with, with what he's telling here in the gospel through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And he, he, he gives all these words that Jesus spoke. And we know that Jesus said it because it's written in red. Um, and as you see here, this really this whole chapter is red, uh, which I find exciting because I know that every single word that's spoken here was spoken by our Lord and our Savior Jesus. So let's look at these these red words written in red um, with Jesus' love for us. He tells us that there will be a kingdom be likened unto ten virgins. Um, they took their lamps, they went forth to meet their bridegroom, yet five of them were wise and five of them were foolish. And the foolish ones took their lamps, they didn't take oil in them, oil being representative of the Holy Spirit here. They were they were dry, they were empty. Um, the wise ones took the oils in their vessel, they were prepared. They had that preparation, and this is what we're to be as Christians. We're to have that preparation of the Holy Spirit in our life. The bridegroom was tarrying, and they all slept. And, and they slumbered, it says. So they went to sleep. They weren't awaiting, expecting the bridegroom to come. But at midnight, the time when they would least expect it, there was a cry that came, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, and he comes out to meet you. And all the virgins arose, and they trimmed their lamps. This was um, done in the Jewish tradition when the bridegroom was coming to take his bride. And keep this in mind, when the bride and the groom were to get together, most of the time, um, this this was a period of at least a year or longer before the bridegroom would come to take the bride to, to live with him. She would live um, with her parents and all these preparations would be going on and she did not know the time that he would come to get her. They went through all these these preparations and all these these things to get ready for their wedding, but she didn't know what day he would come to get her. This is and this is still Jewish tradition. Uh, but at midnight it says that he came. 
at the time they least expected. The ones that arose that had trimmed their lamp, they were ready. But the foolish ones were asking for oil from the other ones. And they and the wise ones answered, saying, Not so, lest we not have enough for ourselves. Go ye rather to and sell and buy for yourselves. And when they went to buy, the bridegroom came. They missed it. And they were they were ready that went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. You know, God has prepared a certain time for his coming. Jesus will come in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, when you least expect it. All these things that had to be fulfilled, they've been fulfilled. We, we're just waiting. We are waiting for our Savior to come and get us. It could be any moment, any day. It could be today. And he's telling us here, be ready. Don't be caught up in the things of this world or having to go to buy and sell and do the things that the world does. But instead, have your lamps trimmed. Have your oil on fire ready to, to be lit and ready to go when the bridegroom comes. You won't be left behind. Your, your, your oil is the Holy Spirit. He keeps us. He guides us. He, he helps us walk in the pathway that we need to walk with God. He says, Afterward came the other version saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But you know what? When that door is shut, when that trumpet sounds, it's too late to say, Jesus, save me. It's too late then to go on that first load that's going in the rapture. So to go at that point, during that great tribulation period, you will have to lose your life. You will have to die um, a horrible death. Go through horrible things. But if you accept the Lord, you, you, will, you will make it. It will be a hard way, but you will make it. Do it now. Do it while it's easy. Do it while you can come to the Lord and confess your sins to Him and accept Jesus as your personal Savior today. It's that simple. Confessing your sin. Telling Him, Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins, that you rose again on the third day. And today I'm making a decision, a new way of living. I am making a decision to walk with you and what you did for me at the cross so that I can be secure, so I won't be like one of these foolish virgins who was not ready but I'm going to be the wise one who's trimming my lamp, keeping it burning, keeping preparation, looking with expectancy for your coming. Because once the, the trumpet sounds, it's too late to ask then. It says, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore. Watch. You don't know the day or the hour that the Son of Man cometh, Jesus says. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered them into his goods. And it says he gave five talents to another two and another one and every single man of his several ability and straightway took his journey. And he received the five talents and went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So one of them took the five and traded and, and made that same back. Likewise, two received two and he gained two back. And the other one went and he digged his talent and put it in the dirt, covered it up, didn't do anything with it. He said, after a long time, the Lord of the servant came, um, and he, he came to, to reckon with them. He came to settle up the score. He came to see what they did with the talent that he gave them. What are you doing today as, as a child of God with the talents that God has blessed you with? Are you, are you investing your talents in other people so that other people will come to know the Lord? Or are you burying the talent that God has given you, hiding it under a bushel, not doing what you're supposed to do because you're more concerned about making people people happy or doing what people expect you to do. But instead, Jesus is saying here that these with the talents, some some really invested them, but others dug a hole and, and didn't use their talent. And Jesus is saying here, he says, His Lord said to him, Well done to the ones that invested their talent. You were good. You were faithful over a few things. I will make you a ruler over many. So you got to be faithful in the little things with God as a new Christian or as an old Christian. we got to be faithful to the Lord in all that we're saying and all that we're doing. He says, I'm going to make you a ruler over much if I can trust you with a little. God wants to see if he can trust you today. If he can trust you with the little things, he can trust you with greater things. And I found this to be true in my own life as, as I've progressed with the Lord, as I've learned more and more about him, as I've invested my talent and given it to him. Every Everything that we have, if we give it to God, if we surrender it to Him, if we allow Him to work through what He's blessed us with, then God blesses it double and triple. He says, so as they received it, He said, Lord, you gave me two, I'm giving you two back. And the Lord said, well done. Well done for what you did here. You were faithful. I'm going to make you rule over this. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And this is what he's going to say to you and me as we've worked for Christ and we're all doing different works for him. But what work that you do that you've given to God, that you've let him have the glory in, he's going to give you his glory one day. Praise God for that.
So the one that received the one talent, he said, Lord, I knew that you were a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown and gathering where thou hast not strewn. And I was afraid. And I went and I hid my talent in the earth. There's people out here right now under the sound of my voice that have hid their talents. They've got a talent that God's given them to use for his kingdom, but they're sitting on it and they're not using it. If this is you, listen to what the Lord said. The Lord answered and said unto him, You're wicked and you're a slothful servant. You're lazy. You knew that I reaped where I sowed not and gathered where I had not strewn up. If we don't sow goodness of God. If we don't sow the talents that God has blessed us back into the kingdom of God, then we come up short. Jesus is telling us here. Not just short, but we've come up wicked. We come up lazy. He said, you ought to therefore have put my money to the exchangers. Then at my coming, you should have received my own. But he says, take therefore the talent from him and give it to him who has ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he that hath abundance. But with him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness for, darkness, for there be weeping and gnashing of teeth. We know what place he's talking about there. He's talking about hell. Jesus doesn't want you to go to hell. He wants you to take what he's given you, your talents that he's blessed you with. He wants you to use those talents for him. Whether it's a musical talent that he's given you, whether it's a talent for money, whether it's a talent for business, whatever talent you have, you are to glorify God in this gift that he has blessed you with. As you glorify him, he blesses you back. Not only does he bless you back, but he gives you an eternal inheritance with him. Praise God for that. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all his holy angels with him, then he shall sit upon the throne of glory. This is what we have to look forward to as we have invested all that we have in Jesus Christ. He says, I'm going to gather all the nations. I'm going to separate one from another. I'm going to separate out the sheep from the goats. A goat's going to be the ones that haven't used their talent for God. A sheep is going to be the one who says, Jesus is my Savior. I have been covered in the blood of the Lamb. Then shall the king say unto him on the right hand, Come ye blessed, my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. From the very foundation of the world, Jesus has prepared a place for you and for me. This is what we're looking forward to. This is what we're keeping our focus on. All eyes on him, what he's going to do. He says, For there were people that said, I was hungry. And to the hungry, what did you do? I gave them meat. You said I was thirsty. We gave them something to drink. You, I was a stranger. You took me in. This is the, the signs of a Christian. These are the things that we do. We love those that need help. We, we make way and help the hungry. We, we provide water for the thirsty. We take the strangers in and love them. He says, naked, you clothed me. I was sick and you visited me. I was in prison and you came to me. This is the love of God. This is what we're to shine. The righteous answered, saying, Lord, when he saw that you were hungry, he fed thee, thirsty, and gave drink. Um, the stranger we took in, the naked we clothed, the sick and the prison we came and we visited. And the king shall answer and say to them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these, my brethren, you have done it unto me. Everything that you've done, every person you've invested in, that you've shared Jesus with one day, it's going to be worth all that investment that you made. And to those who couldn't give back to you here on this earth, you invested your time, your money, your effort into them. You may have gave all you had one day. Jesus is going to reward you openly in front of all of heaven, and that will be the greatest reward you'll ever receive. He says, there's going to be some, at verse 41, depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. That's where hell is. That's what it's for. For the devil and his angels, not for you and me. We can avoid that today. For I was hungry, and you gave me no meat. I was thirsty, you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, you took me in not. Naked, you didn't clothe me. Sick and in prison, you visited me not. When we don't do these things, Jesus said, that the Lord, he saw these that hungered and thirst and strangered and naked, sick, in prison, and did nothing. When we see the needs and we do nothing, Jesus said, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as you did not do to one of the least of these, you did not, you did it not to me. And these shall go away into everlasting punishment, for the righteous are going to go into eternal life with God. So here is a mark of a Christian. A mark of a Christian a building block here, a building a new life in Christ. We see needs 
And we don't just see them as a Christian, but we want to do something about it. We want to act on what Jesus said to act on. The hungry, the thirsty, those in need, those that need clothing, those that need shelter, those that need a refuge in Jesus Christ, those that need a visit, that we're willing to go and we're willing to be the hands and the feet of Jesus today. I pray this word has blessed you. Please like, please share, subscribe. We love you. We're praying for you and we'll see you soon. God bless.